So let's talk about some different types of applications, okay? So this is a, a cast of a finger, but basically I was interested in trying to get the ridge detail on this finger. I wanna get in really, really, really close. It caught the interest of a lot of people, a lot of people that are doing latent print examinations and stuff like that. Because if you can get this kind of detail on very small objects, obviously, you know, you we can 3D print this now. Um, we can do a, a whole uh, bunch of stuff here patterns type stuff like tire tread and, you know, wear on shoes or impressions, um, you know, bigger than obviously the size of something that's just a couple of centimeters. But this is great for that. Uh, photogrammetry can be uh, very much used for something like this. And for people who are doing the collision reconstruction, see, so a lot of people it's great that you have photogrammetry and you have laser scanners or whatever, but it's all about what you can do with the data. Right. So in this case, if you create a 3D model, you can unwrap a tire flat. Let me just rewind that because uh, I hope everybody caught that. So you have this tire. So I'm using something, an unwrap function in cloud compare. And it doesn't matter how you get the data. You can get it through a laser scanner or photogrammetry, but you can do things to a 3D model, right? That you can't do otherwise. It's not really easy to do otherwise. And so see here now I've taken the, the round tire and I've projected it flat. And we actually did this on a, a recent case that we had. And this, this proved to be very, very useful. What other things can you do? Well, what happens if you're going to be working in a different light source? So everything that we've been doing right now, we've been doing with uh, just a regular camera. So we've been taking pictures, uh, you know, regular visible camera. But on the right here, this is an infrared camera. Actually, it's a full spectrum camera, but we're using a filter on it so that we just get the infrared portion. So you'll notice that the colors and the textures are different than what we see on the left, right? So notice that the writing really pops out. So if you're doing something with you, you know, ultraviolet light, or you're doing something with infrared, um, so long as you can capture the images and then put them together, it's possible to reconstruct things in other wavelengths of light. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. Clandestine graves. So this is a model that I did and I filmed it with an old iPhone six. Um, I think I showed you a skull before, but this was a clandestine grave. So what we're doing here is I'm just walking around and I'm using the high speed uh, capture, like the slow motion thing where I capture it like 120 frames a second. And the reason is I'm close to the ground. So as I move my phone, if I just use 30 frames per second and there's any jerkiness or whatever, I'm going to get blurring and it's not going to look that great. So sometimes you have to weigh the balance between high resolution video and a lower frame rate versus, you know, high frame rate and lower resolution. And so I found that getting crisp images is really helpful. So um, if you have a 4K, you know, camera and you're recording at 30 frames a second, you know, that's okay. If you can record at 60, that's even better. Um, and this can turn into a nice 3D model like this. So uh, you extract all the frames. And then when you extract the frames, you combine them into uh, photogrammetry software. And some you can either um, do this externally. So um, you can use a software like Input Ace, QuickTime, uh, whatever you have that will extract the individual frames. Or a lot of software now, like for example, 3DF Zephyr has a video application in there. So you just drag in the video. You, you can crop the video to a certain size and say, I want to extract one frame every two seconds or something like that. And then from there, you can basically um, process those images directly inside of Cloud Compare. Now, this is the one that I showed you the other day using the 360 cameras. But really what I wanna show you is not so much that, but a lot of people are still creating drawings, drawings of buildings, of architecture. Um, you know, if it was a crash scene or something like that, you may wanna just make a sketch of the environment that you're in, something like this. It's kind of funny because we're capturing everything in 3D and then we go back to 2D, but you know, in uh, in courts all over the world, 2D sketches are still being used and they're still valuable and, and useful for a lot of people. They're just easy to interpret and easy to see. So uh, being able to work with the 3D data uh, imported into computer-aided drafting software or forensic software and then creating drawings is also quite helpful. This is an interesting one too. So this is a video that I just scraped off of YouTube and I've got no information or background on this video other than I saw it and I said, ah, let me just try it. Let me see what happens. So you can see somebody's got a drone and they're flying around this uh, particular crash or whatever. And I don't know, some people are looking at it. Maybe they're investigating who knows what. 
But what you can do is with this video is you can do the same thing. This is a video that I didn't take myself. I just took it off the internet. Um, now you'll see that it doesn't look all that great. It's really crappy actually. But if you have nothing and you can just scrape it off the internet, this gives you something in the absence of nothing. So it could potentially be useful if you wanted to take, you know, some kind of measurements or look at the shape of something, or maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a way you can create a model and then just make a 3D print of, uh, of something like that.